welcome back. This is really awkward because we now we're 40 minutes, minutes in, but now we're having to do a welcome back because this is not going to be the same episode as before. Hey guys, welcome to the Nice Guys of Comedy podcast with your hosts, Jack Vincent and Nick Crooks. Oh, and by the way, they're from the North. That's the reason they sound that way. It's really weird now, but yes, we are joined on the Nice Guys Comedy Podcast this evening with the wonderful Kerry Robinson. She has been here for the vodcast. We're changing the name because it's fucking disgusting. But yeah, we are joined today by Kerry Robinson, and this is going to be the audio version, the podcast. We can still see each other's beautiful faces, um, but this is just going to be a tangent. I should have really asked you before, before, before we press recording. Do you actually have anything that you wanted to talk about, or are we just ad-libbing the shit out of this shite? And just ad lib. I've got absolutely nothing to talk about, really. That is, I mean, to be fair, nine times out of ten, we don't. And then when we do, we speak for an hour, and then we don't press record, um, which has happened before. <laughs> yes. yes, it has. But no, now that the one thing I, I did wonder, because it was something that me and Nick were speaking very briefly about today, is now that comedy is slightly kind of slowly coming back, uh, do you have you started getting on the in? I can't, I'm, I'm, I, okay, that was really, I was about to burn. Like, literally, I, what were you doing? Burp. I was doing that to type, but then I started to burp, so it made into face, which just looks like I'm just. <laughs> anyway. A damn. It, well, it looks like something even more inappropriate. Have you started doing the applications for any more future gigs that you've seen? Oh, no, I haven't. I have actually got a gig um, that is supposed to take place in Sheffield in September, the third of September at the Toolmakers. Um, can we car share? Yeah, there's about. I think, like, I think most of Leeds is doing that gig. Because I think Emma Crossland's doing it. <laughs> I don't think Nick is. <laughs> yeah. I'll... I don't know how many people still, but it seems to be like everybody I know is doing that gig. Except Nick. <laughs> I Nick. Yeah. That's just harsh shit. I mean, let's just take a moment here. Shall, should we get in contact? That the, I mean, what, what awards do you have again? I have two year running. Harrogate Community of the Year. <laughs> and uh, a gong from Beat the Gong. Oh, the, uh, oh yeah, of course, because you got the gong for when... I mean, Kerry went to the Stockton gong in December and it was a very... It was a, an all-round very painful night. <laughs> yeah. It was... Um, yeah, that was an emotional night. Yeah. It was one of those moments where I got on stage and I had a moment of realisation of what I was actually doing. You're like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you in this room with all these drunk boxing people at Christmas? You fucking idiot. And they saw the fear in my eyes and gonged me off. Thanks. It, it's one of the only times where I've had a gig, and in actual fact, looking back, I'm quite glad that I got gonged off when I did because I was, not, I was the last person of 16 at Christmas on a Saturday night, I want to say, and they were out for blood. And just before I got gonged off, I started to hear booze, and I was like, "Just get, just, just get me off, just get me right off." Oh, brutal, properly brutal. I'm glad I did it, and I'd probably do it again because I'm an idiot. But it was, um, <laughs> it were, yeah. And I think it was also when you went on the stage and saw. Just how massive the place is as well. It was the, certainly the biggest place I played up until that point, and it's like Jesus Christ. I'd like to point out as well. Like, <clears throat> obviously, we didn't have a great experience, and Nick will probably say that it's completely opposite because he had a great one. The venue itself, beautiful. I would love to do that venue ever again. Uh, I d if I if I was to do a got the Gong show, I would do what Nick did and did it in the do it in the summer because yeah. the Christmas one. People are, like I said, I could, I, could hear, I could see them smelling for blood. Yeah. It were just ma loads of massive Christmas parties that had all been on lash for probably all day and were just ready to scream at whoever they could. But, yeah, I boo actually hearing boos. Thankfully, not when I was on. They were, they were very nice to me, actually. Um, but, yeah, hearing people being booed was really weird. 
but I guess it's what you expect from a kind of gong at Christmas. Uh, I don't know. Is it, Nick? Is it? Ah. I didn't do it at Christmas, so I mean, I'd give it a shot at Christmas. I'd walk out, Santa sack full of dildos, dish them <laughs> out, instant win, I think. I genuinely think it is like the way forward. I need to incorporate it. Yeah, I watched that though, Nick. I watched yours, and you were you were brilliant. You had them in the palm of your hand. Well, I spoke. To, I actually spoke to Jim first, and I asked him what what's the best way to go. And he said you need to get them the first ten seconds. Yeah. So that's why I changed and my set around because I don't normally start with a dildo, but in that I start with it straight away. And I I think I started off quite well. I got to about two minutes. 15 I think and it was only because I paused and mm. the could that I wasn't quite I wasn't I was, I was nervous and yeah. then that were it I got off um the thing is like, yeah. it's like with me it's like, it's like I'm not saying that I'm the I'm not saying that I'm a, a you know the best comedian I'm not saying that I'm absolutely dog turd but I think for me I knew for a fact that I wasn't going to do well because, like I said, I went on last out of 16 acts. And in actual fact, I actually think there might have been more because if I remember they booked 16 and then a random person turned up. So we're maybe even talking 17 people. And it was, like I said, at Christmas. And I, even, I don't even think I got to a minute. And at that point, it was like I, they, they checked out. They checked yeah. out. At that point. And um, I don't think anybody would have... Uh would have hit the full five minutes at that point. They they had had enough. Um, yeah. But I'm I'd do it again. Because it were it was an experience. And I've done Frog and Bucket as well since, which some people say it's alright, some people say it's awful. Um but I did alright. I've got through my five minutes. Um we don't talk about the frog and bucket because I've done the frog and bucket once and I got gonged off at four minutes and 56 seconds. That is, that's so mean. They shouldn't be allowed to do that. Should they? The thing is, I sit there and I go, if I had just breathed for a little bit longer. Yeah. You'd have you'd, you'd done it, wouldn't you? Yeah, but, it's weird though. It's it gave me the it's one of the only time I've only come off I've only come off three gigs, physically shaking. No, I'd say four, four gigs physically shaking. Two for good and two for bad. Two of the gong show and one was at four minute fifty six. And I was like, I am for you, Ming, for you. Although what I will say is part of me. So I'm not going to name any names here because I'm not a eh, I'm a little bit of a twat. But you know, um, <clears throat> I'd gone over to this gig with someone and they'd done it before but hadn't done as well no they no they i apologize they'd, they'd got through the five minutes so they they had like a bit of a confidence to them and it was one of these things where the confidence was coming slightly to the arrogant level mm. and i was like mm, okay okay and i was visibly like i didn't like it i don't know why i did it i was doing all the things you were saying and i was like oh God's sake, God's sake, God's sake. and they were being as cocky as shit and i was like all right all right all right all right all right i then went on Someone followed me, and then they went on, and they didn't even get to two minutes. And I was like, well, ah, well. But that is what it is. But that, they're, they're the gong shows. I mean, I'm, honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of gong shows. Nick will disagree, because he's obviously done very well from gong shows. Oh, no, I don't like Frog and Bucket either. I mean, no, it's not that I don't like it. Um, I think I went in there with the... With, um, well, it's just not as well set up. You're sitting at the back of the room, mm. and then... I mean, it's a lovely venue, and then you get on. I had a card put up against me, and um, I didn't like it. I'm not going to lie. You don't like someone disagreeing with your mindset? No. Nope. Not Nick Rooks. Not me. <laughs> not me. I'm a nice guy. The fact, the funny bit about that was that the fact that someone told her to put the fucking card down. <laughs> someone else in the crowd was like, as if, put that fucking card down. And I was like, yeah, yeah. put the card down. Put it down, love. 
get it now. But in actual fact, Kerry, you had that though, didn't you? When we were at this actual Stockton game we were talking about, there were people, I, I was in the audience, and there were actually people there say, like, when you're, when the camera went up, like, no, what are you doing? What are you doing? Because I think that's the thing as well, is that there's such, the reason why I don't like gong shows as a concept is, comedy is so subjective. And in a gong show environment, you only have, you have three people, there are somewhere five, three to five people whose control, your gig is in their control. And you could have a hundred people and 97 people loving you, but three people not. And if they just happen to have that card, your gig's cut short. It's rude. That, um, you can't change their mind. And obviously if they're sat with people as well that want to go, well, you know, not gong them off, gong them off. Um, that the Stockton gig was the first time I've ever been gonged off. I've you know I've done quite a few gong shows and have got through um, to the final every time. I've not won one yet. I'm bitter about it. I'm so bitter <laughs> about it. Um, but yeah, it was a weird experience. Like Nico said, you don't like it. You feel a bit like what are you doing? You put your card up, you know. So it is. It is really subjective, and it is. It, it's, um, I think you sometimes have to not beat yourself up too much about it because it is that subjective and you are only dealing with, you know, three people's opinions. Out I think of that's, whole room. That's, that's very true. I think, on that minute, when I when we first started like the video, when I mentioned that I'd never really seen you die and you were like, oh, I fucking have. Um, with you then, and th this applies to Nick as well, because I'm, you know, as much as he is the glory leader and got all these fucking awards, not every gong, not every show is as brilliant as we want it to be. So when it's so for, for for you two, when you have a gig that is not gone the way that you want it to, what are your techniques? What do you do to kind of get over it? We'll start with Nick. What 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 do you kind of do to get over it? Essentially, after are you just talking about afterwards? Yeah. Um. <sighs> I don't know, I'll just sort of get on with it, I suppose. I'll just think, yeah, fuck it. I'll get them next time. Just a grin and bear it, move on situation. Yeah, I think if you if you if you dwell on it too long, that's it can fuck you up, can't it? Mm. What about you, Kerry? I try and take the humour out of it. Like, for example, the Bradford one where it was an afternoon gig and you know, someone actually disagreed with part of my set and had, were quite vocal about it and I just found that really funny so that was like, like well that's really funny it's the Piers Morgan bit and they clearly were a Piers fan and didn't take kindly to me lampooning him but I was like I want to say what the fuck is wrong with you for? Um, but I didn't think that would go down well on a Sunday afternoon in Bradford uh, you never know you never know I mean it's a bit kind of, well what I tend to do is a kind of a mixture of almost both of them um and also a little bit added is what I I'm a bit like Nick kind of a grin and bear it move on they're gonna have bad ones and kind yeah. of think from there but then what I also do is I also look at the different factors as to why it didn't go that well like we said about the Stockton one one I was 16 everyone were hammered I wasn't 16 at all I've never been 16 well I have been 16 but not in comedy but there were 16 acts um, so I, that's something that for me that okay they were tired they were blah 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 when I've done mixed bill nights it's like well they didn't want comedy um, yeah. when I, I remember one there were a gig that I didn't do as well and it was the only gig that I've done where I've had a drink and I was like that'll be probably the reason why but that's I also <laughs> but I also don't make excuses you know in the sense of I'm not there to say oh well they only didn't like it because of this this and this 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 and that like I'm looking at where I can also improve and then go forward and make myself kind of get through it better um but I'll always look at the re uh, reasons why and then also for me personally look at what I can do to get better like for example one thing I noticed and you guys might agree might not if you're ever gigging kind of never I had to do my geography then ne northeast so kind of your Middlesbrough Newcastle that sort of end them audiences love it when you talk to them. They love it when your like your comedy is involved with them. Um, so for me, I kind of can then tell my thing to go. Oh, here's more of a talky bit. Like I've got a bit in mind where, f for a good part of it, it's me going back and forth. And nine times out of ten, if I'm in a room that, if I'm like cutting time on something like that, I'll kind of just ch cut it down. So then it's not really me talking, so they're not controlling it. If I'm in the northeast, talk all you want. This will be my whole fucking set because 
they love it when they're involved. And that's not that's not a discriminatory thing in the slightest. They just love being involved, whereas it's one of the things I've noticed. More Borough, they love being part of that, whereas everywhere else, they're quite happy to say, go on then, you do it. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. No, I, I found that as well, actually. They do like to be part of it. Um, and, the, the, you know, the kind of off-the-cuff stuff as well. Yeah, um, definitely. When you're based. Um, Manchester, they're very much they want to be entertained. They'll sit and watch, and you know, um, and like idiots. But um, no, Leeds are lovely people. Um, yeah. You notice so, that now she's left. She's now getting a bit more angry at Leeds people. That was on there. And Bill Cattle, uh, Bradford, Leeds. Whereabouts are you kind of are you quite central to Bradford then? Is that now going to come like your second home? Yes, I am very central to Bradford. I am in BD7, the proper hood. Um, I'm at Hart and I'm in Hart and Bank, and it's really it is really nice, but it is like a five minute bus ride to, to the city centre. Uh, is it one, one of the buses going down Manchester Road? Yeah, is that how close? Yes, yeah. Jack's thinking, what is going on with all these directions now? No, what I am thinking is, can we not do what you did to Millie and basically tell the whole of everyone listening exactly where Kerry lives? I mean, Manchester, Millie. <laughs> Manchester Road links a lot of places. So It does. It does. Yeah. And to be yeah. fair, Millie lives in a little tiny village that pretty much you go there once and you pretty much know it all. Okay. Well, weirdly enough, uh, I don't like. I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to watch the episodes that we did with uh, Millie Kerry, but we literally Nick described a specific person from this village who we went on holiday once and saw, and then literally two weeks later we got a message from Millie going, "I've just met." Him. That's how oh. small this village is. See, there you go. Oh, that's why I'm glad I live in a city. <laughs> Everyone knows have- everything. I am much more of a city person. I don't like that about small villages where you literally like got you got your curtain twitches and like my mum lives in a really small village where everyone knows everyone. And I remember I've had two stories which made me think I could never live around here because it's fucking weird. Someone once came round to that. I was my mum had been away for the weekend, so I was her. I was back living at home and I was house sitting. And someone came round to the house at eleven a.m. on a Sunday, and I was like, "Are you are you all right?" And she's like, I "Just want to make sure you're okay." And I was like. Yeah, I'm fine. And she's like, <laughs> oh, well, it's just because your curtains are still closed and it's 11 o'clock. And I was like, all right, leave me alone. Like, this, I've only just woke up. And because I only woke up because you knocked on the door. Yeah, I was watching TV, bollock yeah. naked. I didn't want, didn't want anyone else to see. Have you got a problem with that? Yeah. Well, yeah, could you put your dressing gown on, please? Because you didn't have to answer the door like that. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. But no, and the second <laughs> one was kind of... <laughs> It was kind of similar. My mum was on holiday. Again, I was house-sitting. And I'd got a phone call from my mum whilst she was in Germany saying, Jack, you need to get home right now. Someone's in the house. Someone's robbing the house. They're in a hoodie. They're robbing the place. I went, no, mum, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and she went, you're robbing the place. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted so, could you, you could have asked. No, no word of a lie. Literally, I'd woken up, chucked a hoodie on, I was going around the house and like doing all, and one of the neighbours had seen someone in a hoodie that they didn't recognise and thought the place was getting robbed. Now, if it was, that's quite a good neighbour, but it wasn't. It was me, right? And I just put my hood up. They'd they never, they, they'd never seen you before. Do you say how little you visit your mum? Is that what we're trying to work no, out? I, I, the thing is, this was at the end of the holiday. I'd been there for three weeks, but I think it was because... I'd put my hood up. Obviously, I'd be up. It's gingy a lot. That's what it was. See, we've moved on to a street where, before I lived on a main road, and, you know, no one spoke to anybody in not far from city, the lead city centre. But we've moved to a proper street. Like, and neighbours talk to each other. Like, my neighbour, my neighbours immediately either side have brought us a card and flowers. Like, I don't know how to react. Wait, I'm a bit off. I'm socially awkward as it is. So having to like react to you know people, strangers that live next door to me being kind and nice, it's like I don't know what to do with this. I'm not sure. I'm and the it's same like, as it's 
like I don't I, I just like to get on with it really really I'm just quite antisocial so I'm very much like you I when I live by myself I've always lived in cities and like kind yeah. of where people like you said people just don't talk to everyone um like the place that I'm at the moment I've lived here for just over a year and I've only just started to know who my neighbors are because I now see them like for the first couple of months I was here I just never saw anyone in the street um, but I've now gotten quite comfortable, like the other day, I mean, I always live in a very classy area, because the other day, someone was getting arrested on the street, okay, and we were doing what anyone in Yorkshire does, which was hanging out the window, to see what we could find out, uh. but I was hanging out my window, and it was up the street where I couldn't see, but the girls are on the opposite thing, they were hanging out, they were new, they, they'd only just moved in recently, and they were looking out the window, and my, my, my housemate was like, you've got to be discreet, I was like, nah mate, and then shouted out the window, like, what do you know? <laughs> what have you seen? Uh, but I may flash up on the screen now the video of that show two people been arrested. Turns out two two uh, two uh, things of assault. That's what it was. So some some serious shit. That's proper serious shit, isn't it? Yeah. Well, they arrested three guys and then let one guy go. But they, this is the thing where I was like, is it really that serious? They let him go after they were showing each other videos on the phone. Like, the police officer was showing the guy, like, TikToks on his phone. And I was like, <laughs> you probably shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Look, watch it again. Look at my numbers going up. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that then. I about to say, being the parent of teenagers, I bet you have become, obs uh, not you obsessed, but you know about the TikTok world. I'm all over TikTok. Hey, yeah. I have actually got three videos on there. And I really annoyed both of my children because one of my videos has got more vid more views. One of my videos has got more views than their entire collection of videos. They're not happy when that not, happened. Not a cool mum. How, how many views have you got, Nick? Let's see. Let's use a little bit more views because you guys have got videos on there. I don't have any on mine. Oh, you... Hardly any for me. Um, hang on. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Go on, Kerry. How many views have you got? That will look. Go on, uh, Kerry, how many views have you got? Uh, 532 on one video. Bastard. Not that, not that you count it in the specific numbers. Go on, <laughs> go on, Nick, how many have you got? I have got views on it. It is 121. Oh, well done. I mean, I'd expect more from Harrogate New Convener of the Year, but okay. Yeah, uh, well, I've not been busy on this. <laughs> to be fair, I posted my set. And it just didn't get the response I, I hoped for. We got four likes. The wrong demographic, to be honest with you, though. Really. Yeah, it is. I thought I'll try it out. Four people yeah. liked it. I thought, go on, you four people. <laughs> See, I've recently, I've recently downloaded TikTok, and I think when I say recently, I mean the last two days, and it has ruined my. I mean. You might not, you I say might not, Kerry, you're not going to be aware of this because it's not gone out yet, but we've got an episode that goes out on Friday because I'm recently going through the referral process about getting tested for ADHD. Um, and we talked a little bit about that. Um, I realised after downloading TikTok, I fucking have ADHD. If I am not invested in that video within one second, I am scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Yeah, I... <laughs> I don't know i've been on it but i don't really go on it that much but yeah but to be honest although i have two teenagers neither of them are really that interested jack my own son called jack hates it he thinks it's like the work of the devil it he's going to be daily mail reading tari when he's older that's how he's going to rebel but um he <laughs> did, <laughs> really like um tiktok at all he thinks it's awful um Scarlett dips her toe in now and again. But my stepdaughter, she is obsessed. Does all the little dances and all of that kind of stuff. It's hilarious. Well, this is the thing. This is part of the reason why I never got into it. Because all I knew it was is when people put TikTok videos on Instagram. So I was like, why do I want to see 14-year-old girls in their bikinis dancing? Like, that, that, eh. you know, I don't want to see this sort of shit. Download, I, I downloaded it because someone shared a video and it was like, you need to watch it on TikTok. So I thought, all right, okay, I'll do it. Download it. And I have, since I've been on it, I have not seen one dancing video. But I think it's because the algorithm is so clever in what you do and do not like that it knows not to give me that. But I, I've what I the, the amount of videos that I have watched where I've seen just someone's feet 
because it's them walking with the phone that way. I, I, I just need to see too. There's too many feet. <laughs> the thing is that what Facebook has started doing is you get videos of like TikTok compilations. So yeah. um, the ones that I've been looking at for some reason during lockdown, I've got obsessed with the um, hair fail video. So where someone will be bleach their hair or dye their hair or cut their hair and it turns into a disaster. So I'm assuming then you're a massive big fan of, is it Brad Mondo? Oh, oh yes. I know Brad Mondo, all about him and his, his hair dye. I know everyone apologises to him. I actually bleached my own roots at the weekend and I did apologise to Brad Mondo whilst doing it. Um, <laughs> you but... weren't filming it. You were just like, I'm just sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> bleached a t-shirt and a towel around me, my neck. Ugh. But anyway... Um, I've watched a lot of TikTok compilations of people um, like ruining the hair. And that I think I might have ADHD because I do enjoy the very quick kind of next one, next one, next one, next one. I don't have the attention span for a full film. I don't know how you've managed to watch an entire film because I watch so much YouTube. Now I can only watch things in bite size. This is me. This is literally something I've noticed as well. It's like um, I've I've currently started making a little, like just a little bit of a comedy skit video, and on the video editing software that I do, any element that you put into it, so like a title or an image, it's there for five seconds. So when I press play, I'm like, that's far too long. Give me half a second, and that's all that you need. And I'm there going, I don't need a doctor to tell me I've got ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. I Steve gets really mad with me because he'll be like, what are you watching? And it's always I'm watching something on Facebook that's, you know, videos, you end up starting to watch one video and then you get down the wormhole of the videos. We've been and there. They show you the same chuffing videos over and over again. So I've, I've watched one Graham Norton clip and now I've seen them all. So every time he sees me, he's like, what are you watching? I'm watching Graham Norton. Again, it's like, no, it's just Facebook, like, selecting stuff for me. It's not me. Um... Yeah, I do. I do enjoy a good old YouTube wormhole. It's it's it can lead you down some dark paths. There. The other day, I spent an hour and a half literally just watching groomsmen video, like dance videos at weddings. So <laughs> oh god! But the oh, thing I'm is, gonna... do it right. And I sat there going, "Oh my god, that'd be so cool to do." And then they immediately went, "None of my male friends would want to do that. I don't even want to do that. I just want the reaction." <laughs> I'd do it with you. Get me there. Okay. Cheers, dude. <laughs> I'll be a groomsman. I'll do it with you. These just people dance for the wedding days. That's what that's what a job is. It's absolutely un. Are you all? It's unreal. The other one as well. At one point, it was when um, it was one of these videos where oh, it's where someone. Do you know when the dog? It's not a gender reveal, but they didn't. Keep, they kept the baby's gender a secret, and they all come yeah. to the hospital. But then there's a big surprise that they actually had twins and no one knew, right? Yes, I've seen that one. And I was sat there going, that would be absolutely sick. I really want to do that. I went, it's not a good enough reason to have a kid. Like, it's not a good enough reason. You don't want a child. <laughs> Let alone two at the same time, at the no. same age. The thing is, I'd have loved to have done that, but I cannot keep, I cannot hold my water. So as soon as I found out I was having twins, I told everybody. Everybody in bands, they knew that I you know, was having twins <laughs> on that day. We were that but, person going, Hi, I'm Kerry, I'm pregnant with twins. Uh, well, this yeah, is just a job. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's so she could literally get anyone would give her anything she wanted. Anything. She was in supermarkets, the lot, everybody yeah. knew her. Um, I'm Kerry and I'm having twins. Oh, do you want to come, yeah. to, the, <laughs> come to the front of the. Genuinely, that is exactly what I did, honestly. Why did you let her in front of you? Shut up. I'm not feeling for her too. <laughs> when I was proper Hi, Perry, pregnant, having there, twins. <laughs> when I was on, proper sorry, pregnant, there, people did guess that I was having twins because oh, I God. was fucking massive. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst thing. Imagine that, and you go, "No, I'm not having twins. Uh, it's one twat. baby. It's just one. All right." <laughs> this is actually it actually does link me my, one of the uh, t um, one of the TikToks that I, I saw and it was a guy on a bed and this girl woman comes in and she went that's it I'm leaving you you're absolutely horrible I don't want to speak to you ever again and he turned around and went but what about our kid and he went we don't have one she went, he went well why are you so fat and I was like oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 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 
that's quite good that i was like i was quite impressed with that one that's that's the thing as well with some of these tiktoks is i think they're really clever but i'm like i could not be that witty because i don't think i'd be that off the cuff (laughs) yeah but we're comedians we should be able to do that kind of shit shouldn't we (laughs) i mean do we not just find out about my experience at the stock to gong so (laughs) oh yeah i forgot about that Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to... Oh, I hate gender reveal anyway. That, 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 you've, you've raised yeah. something that I absolutely hate, the gender reveal parties. I just don't... I'm dead against them. But there you go. There's my little rant over. I think, yeah, it's a weird thing. It's a very American thing that they brought over. It's a very... It's a, I, I'm not... It's weird. I mean, Cause I also think it's just another reason to have a party. Yeah. I, oh, have a party absolutely have a party but basically and i know someone else has said this you're basically just saying this person i'm growing has got a penis or a vagina yay and i could have been like oh i've got a penis and a vagina it might you know because i had a boy and a girl obviously i'm not i'm not confessing <laughs> something oh my God, you're just a big reveal <laughs> <laughs> you imagine um yeah, I just think it's really weird. I mean, yeah, I have a party. Fine. Did you find out right. the sex of your... your yes. Thoughts? Yes. Um, yeah, we found out as soon See, as we could, really. I think you having. find out and then you have a party. You're like, it's a bit weird. I'm going to agree with you. Yeah, it, you are basically just celebrating the fact that they've got one kind of genitals or the See, other. The thing is, when over in the UK, obviously there is diff- there's different kind of privacy laws and X, Y, and Z. So it is a bit. Sh- it's a, in my head, it's a bit silly because someone's told you you're having a boy, and you're throwing a massive big party to say you're having a boy. Now, where it all stemmed in America was that because obviously they they, they don't have, they pay for all their stuff. There's a lot of different things yes. with like privacy yeah. stuff. They used to the the person who the son of the person who said they're having a boy or a girl. They never told the parents. It would go directly to a bakery service and they'd do a big cake cutting. So when they cut that cake, they found out with everyone else. Now, for me, that was like, that's quite a nice heartwarming situation because you're finding out at the same time. It's still a bit superficial. And this cake. I was like, still a bit superficial, in my opinion. But that, I was like, I can kind of get round. But the fact that you're basically saying, oh, I'm having a boy. We're having a boy. What's next? It's white. Yeah, we know you are. Like, I don't like... It, it is weird, but that's just. Uh, I'd love it to be wrong because they can be wrong. Imagine that you can the party and that. you go, "Oh, come on, it's going to be Jerry," and it's actually <laughs> Jemima comes out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I would then laugh my tits off if I got that phone call from like a relative of mine. So how big is he? Um, it's, he's a lot lighter now because he's got some pets in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this is the thing, right? I only learn I only learned this as a someone in my twenties. Um the the way that they find out if it's a boy or a girl is simply by when they scan if they can find a penis or not. I only learned that in my twenties. Yeah. I genuinely thought like they did this chemical test where it told you about the chromosomes and stuff. <laughs> no, and then, it, it was quite obvious that Jack was a Jack. All right, okay. It, you could <laughs> quite clearly see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> talking about <laughs> go on lad he went like this he went and spelt it out the ladies um <laughs> oh god <sighs> yeah they just they, you can tell you can just tell see this is the thing right as well though like i have seen baby pictures of like scam pictures and i'm looking at them going i can barely f- make out an actual baby in some of these i don't know if i could make out if they had a penis or not you see we had we had like a scan every four weeks so i kind of got to see him quite a lot so you kind of got to see go whoop, 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 hello i have a penis um, yeah pretty much that was the oh, longest okay. secret i had that we had for us because we didn't we didn't find out so it was the longest thing to be kept what you guys didn't even find out yourselves no 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 not until the day till oh. i went oh penis for both of them yeah wow you see i don't know why i was so keen to to find out 
I guess, because we were having two. Yeah, I think that I would as well, because you want to find out if you're having both the same. You want to sort of get ready for that, don't you? Whereas if you're like, it's just one, I'm all right. And then when it's on the day, you're like, oh, 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 it's massive. It's it's a boy. (laughs) (laughs) It takes after his dad. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I'm waiting Yay. for that. That's a, that's a proper muggle line, that, as a dad. <laughs> isn't it? Oh. It's a pro- that's a proper, like, yeah. all right, dad joke. They're already coming out. Oh, that he takes after his dad. Look at him. Balls <laughs> are as big as tennis balls. <laughs> I, <it's> an <laughs> I, I, I am writing a new bit about, obviously, being pregnant with twins, and it's like everyone always congratulates the dad. Hey, look at you, you super sperm. It's like... <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I... no, like, no. identicals. It's down to you, that, isn't it? Yeah. Well, be- it well I the, have... egg, the egg splits, doesn't it? Es- essentially, my womb is like a baby trapper. A man trapper, should I say? Rather than a baby trapper. <laughs> a man trapper. Because I released two eggs to make sure I definitely got pregnant. So... <laughs> But he just hit both of them, so yeah. <laughs> Your ex yeah. going, We are keeping this guy. We are gonna Keep have a relationship. When they congratulate the man <laughs> When they congratulate the man, it's not like he just releases two and the, he's like, Right, go. There's like oh, millions. Oh. You know, it's like a fucking marathon in there. <laughs> yeah. What about like they just, that's, that's got like, their fastest? Yeah, that's like throwing a bucket of shit at a pinhole <laughs> and hoping that you hit it. And then going, yeah, there we go. I've won that. Look at that. I've hit, I've hit that. I've hit that five P shaped target on the wall. Uh, did you Did you need to use the analogy of shit? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I could think of what I could, y'all. Think, I could have said paint. I'm looking at paint right now. <laughs> is that a euphemism? Is that what you? Is that no, what you call? Genuinely looking at paint. Is. That was the Nice Guys of Comedy Podcast with Jack Vincent and Nick Crooks. Recording from their own home and heavily fucking edited. Follow them at I am Jack the end of Nick Crooks Comedy Why Don't Ya? Hashtag Nice Guys.